it not realizing it was so sad. And yeah. I said, well, there is a message of hope at the end. If you can make right. it to the end, there yeah. is a, a message Which is of what hope. you're, the reason why you wrote it as well. Right, to give people hope and mm -hmm. to kind of help them get through that whole process. And, and knowing that you have to go through grief, you can't skip it. <laughs> you really kind of have to uh, uh, go through it. And as you were saying earlier, everybody goes through their own grief their own way. Right. Exactly. And I never presume to to know anybody else's grief, to know exactly what they're going through, is that, you know, I just present this as this is what I did, and this is how I went through it. Right. Um, and, uh, and if it helps one person, then it makes me feel good. good. Mm. The creative part always fascinates me. After you wrote the book, to get it in that form, mm -hmm. well, originally you probably did it on a computer. Yes. And so forth. And after you, did you, have, did you have an editor? I had four editors, actually. Yeah. Um, well, one was my mother. <laughs> uh, one was my husband at the time, and one was uh, uh, two friends of mine who had each lost brothers. So they sort of um, they knew what that was like. They could sort of relate. Yeah. They could sort of relate. Yeah, they had gone through their own process. Whatever you show process. them on the pages, that's how it came out in the book. Because I see a format where you have like letters. Like, yes. Right, right. So I would, I, I kind, I had divided the book up into pages and had them each edit a portion of it, and then went through. And you so said that's, that's a very rewarding experience when you have it in that form. It is. Yeah. yeah when I got, when I got the original, I got the original proof, and I went through, and I was like, wow, this is really it. And you said two other people lost their brothers. Right? Yes. Now, did they contribute anything to this book, or did they give you any? They, they, they gave you me said, okay. Yeah, they feedback. gave me feedback. Right. Okay. On my own, on my own writing. Yep. And that helped. So it did. It's good that everybody yep. pitched in and had to contribute. Yes. I had, uh, there's um, an entry, two entries from friends of his, and then also a friend's mother who contributed something as well as my mom. She wrote a couple of letters in here. And uh, there's an interview with his first girlfriend from high school. So. This is a sensitive question. Is it, is it difficult for your parents to read the book? Or was it difficult? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I know that they, I think they appreciated what but I it's did. Still, it's still, it's tough. Or, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. it is still tough. And I know, um, I think you had asked earlier if we were going to make a movie out of it. And I had asked them about that. And they said they really didn't want me to make a movie out of it. So um, well, that would have to be on the back burner. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's interesting, the fact of a film, and somebody might be re able to relate to that, but when you read a book, it's not the same as watching a film. You're l looking at it mm. from an Different. internal perspective, yeah. right. I think. It's a lot closer. Right. Yeah. It's a lot closer like that. I, it, it was me that asked, because when you take, when you study screenwriting, right. it's all about the log line, the title, and a poster of the movie, and you have it all there. This, this... <laughs> This makes me, when I see this at Bonds and, you know, if I see it at a bookstore, you would look it at makes it. me want right. to look at right. it. Mm -hmm. And see what the that's title, about. Dear John, uh, Dear Tommy, Dear Tommy. Yeah. makes me think of Dear Anybody. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me relate to, she wrote about Tommy, but who was I thinking about? And mm. it's, it's just a fabulous title and picture. Thank you. It's a, it's a good catch. It's a uh, catch. catch. Yeah. It'll catch your eye when you see something like oh, that. That's good. Thank you. Now, what are your next projects? What, what kind of things do you have? Um, up I have, well, actually, day. something that I hadn't mentioned to you before. I also uh, write music. Oh, no, we didn't talk about no, that. No, we didn't. We hadn't mentioned that. But um, we were talking about different creative right. pieces that flow in the, in the industry. And uh, last year, um, well, 2009, I, I put together a couple of songs and put them on CD. And I'm trying to try to get that going as well. What kind of, what, what's the genre of the song? Um, one of them's a ballad, <coughs> and the other one is a little bit more upbeat. It's, um, Sort of folksy, I guess. I, I don't really, I, I can't name another singer who it's like. It's my own style, I guess. Mm. Nobody so. on American Idol can. <laughs> vocal, vocal, music vocal music, yeah. You re record it yourself? Yes. Yeah, no, not at home. Um, I went to a studio. So. That's tough. Yeah. I think you mentioned it and, and you, you hit it right on the head. Creative, oh, you said creative juices yes. within this industry. There's so many. Yeah. Things that people yeah, do. People that so do. many things that, that the people we, that we've had maybe on are involved in. Improv a joke for us right now. <laughs> 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 right off the top. Oh, you know, I, th I think that's one of the hardest yeah, things, though. Audience? No, you know, just to stand up. It yeah, tells that, to me, that's the most we difficult. Are, we tried that before. It's tough. It's very difficult. Can, can we actually do one for the audience? Right? Okay. I mean, do you? Are you? Um, you know, when you were speaking, when, when um, 
That's your turn. Christine was speaking. I was thinking, <laughs> what would I do as a stand-up if someone said, by the way, the, the crowd that you're visiting today are all authors of books, uh, books about yeah. people they lost. And now I'm going to step in and make them laugh? That's the, that's the yeah. toughest that's job tough, in yeah. the world. But, um, no, the only... Uh, I, John, I like your style because when they tell you in television, don't wear anything checked. Don't wear stripes. I wore it. Don't wear anything that. silver. <laughs> I know. I just have to say you match the hair beautifully. With thanks, the thanks, thanks. That's yeah, right. But color coordination. You defy, you defy that, but I'm sure you looked. I haven't looked at the model. Yeah, I'm but sure I look. I'm fabulous. sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. What, what, what else? Uh, jokes or anything like Jerry is? I thought that was supposed to be one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I got it. Did you get it? You said it matches the hair. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. How did, the worst thing about telling a bad joke is announcing that you're about to tell a bad joke. So. Now, what, what's going on? What's in the future for you? What, what are you involved with coming up? Well, a comedy studio in Cambridge yeah. is my favorite place yeah. to play. It's If it has 14 people, 13 of them are other comedians. Years ago, it's Boston. so hard to do. Just oh to no! Right you, and no. then when it's full, it's it's everybody yeah, as, from as, every as walk of life. As a there. comedian, you have, to, you have your jokes planned out, or are there truly some that can just get up there and just do it? I think both. Right? I don't know anyone that just gets up does there it. and just uh, it. Uh, Rick Jenkins runs the the show. It's his room, the comedy studio, mm -hmm. and he looks for original humor, and he'll he'll let anyone go once and. Uh, but I've never seen anyone that just goes and says, "This is uh, thanks to me. Thanks for letting me be here. I want to talk about nothing." It's it yeah, doesn't years work. ago, yeah, Nick's was pretty much the only one around, right. or the only one of, that, that mm -hmm. people knew about the popular one. But Boston has become a really big comedy central area. There's no question about that. A lot of the oh, yeah. major stars now come to right. Boston first, then they work their way out. That's how they do it now. A lot of them love coming to Boston. You wouldn't have thought that Boston was a big comedy town, but it's turned out to be. You know, people, a lot yeah, of comics are sure. getting their start here. And uh, I heard Paul D'Angelo on TKK today yeah. with the morning program, and he was saying he's got a movie coming out, I think Showtime or yeah. HBO, Godfathers of Comedy. Yeah. Himself and several other Italian-American comedians. Uh, he's been at the Connection for years. And here he's he is. Yeah. yeah, we have Paul D'Angelo, Tony V, right. uh, Sweeney, Steve yep. Sweeney, mm -hmm. and uh, well, even now the old Wilbur, which was a which was a legitimate theater house, yeah. is now a comedy club, sort of, right? right. Ma major Lily Tomlin's coming in a couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So all sorts of things. You do yeah. films too. Yes. You do uh, things in films, stand-up comedy. Um, anything else? You do short, you do... I have the privilege of working on the short. Yeah. And um, with... The gym, gym, of course, yep. Under your direction. <laughs> and with the gym also, we're together in 21. That, okay. Filmed that was on television recently, Kevin a few Spanish, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, um, Great Debaters. Right, that was... Uh, with Denzel Washington. Right, yeah. And we have a nice little shot in that, huh, Jim? I yes, we do. It shot, it shot a couple of summers ago at Harvard, in yep. Harvard Square. Is that's where we, that's right. where and we I had, started yeah. with uh, Mystic River. Yeah. And I was still teaching at that time, and I heard the call yeah. and got into it. And then when I met Jim on 21, then, then I started, he started directing me on where to go. I took yeah. a couple of courses at uh, the Boston... Um, casting. Boston, Boston Casting, casting right. as well as... Uh, CP Casting. CP, CP Casting. What, what, what course is at Boston Casting? Basic acting. Basic. And television acting. What is the first thing in basic they, they teach you? What, yeah, what, it, what, what is the basic acting? Yeah, what, what, is what is the first thing? thing? I've never it's, taken it's, those courses. Well, so well, you know, I, it's, it's, I think the courses are great. Yeah. 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 What's, the, what, what's the one? Well, the acting thing? coach, first half hour, will tell you their experience, mm -hmm. and then tell you just what you said. We're not what not, not to do. Look. Not so much what to do, but they depend on you being a natural. And they try not to discourage anybody, but they're, they're pretty upfront about how it's don't expect anything. Mm -hmm. So if I had to say there's anything about a good acting course, it's uh, we hope you're having fun, but don't ever expect anything from this. Whatever you get will be a bonus. I think the best experience in knowing what this business is all about, in films anyway, is being an extra in a movie. Yeah, and that will teach fair. you a lot, just being right. involved right. with this. You know. Right on the set, yeah. There's a lot of yeah, people around, because a lot of people around you have always been on movie sets. And right. A lot of them had principal roles in some of the TV shows or movie sets. So you can learn. Just keep your eyes and ears open right. and 
we'll pick some things up. Jesse, Jesse and being on here live is, is one of the hardest things. Oh, of course, because Especially it's live. Yeah, we just wing it. Yeah. No and, we do, and we do because it's also interactive television because we don't have a whole lot of calls coming in tonight. Did you bring your script tonight, John? I didn't bring my script because I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to say tonight, Jerry. You right? knew what you were going to say, but you were going to say it, though. That's right. Is that what you're supposed to say? That, I thought that I was, I was going to say that. In fact, what I was going to say is about the show coming up. I know you were going to say that. And then, but, but I know we showed an excerpt of it, so, so you're people. Good. You remember I just that, That's thank you, thank you. Well, a little bit. So we try to do. We, you know, we you try. Know, you know, everything we say, we have. To, we have. <laughs> We, you know, we try to do that, and the one thing, and this is of all of the things, movies, uh, and, I, and I've been very fortunate, I've been off Broadway in New York, and I've done a lot of things, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have done that, but the one that I like the best is television. Doing television. The television is the best that I like, because we have a chance to come into people's homes mm -hmm. and interact with people, and also um, people see it live, for the most part. We do the show, of course, we do the show live unless they see it in repeats, but it people have a chance sitting at home to watch us, to, to, to see what we're, we're doing. And your show, your, your film, which was shot, is about this show mm -hmm. and everything that takes place just prior to the show. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and I think by watching what, what Leo did, I think it's going to whet people's appetites and they're going to be interested mm -hmm. to see what it uh, I, I like the like. interaction between Leo and, and Jim in that chat. Mm. Yeah. And the editing. See, the editing makes that scene, editing's too. Editing's key. That's key, and you that's one always, of the. You can always improve on something, but yeah, yeah. You know, if you have a million dollars, you can make anything look good. Right. <laughs> but you made that look good without a million dollars. Yeah, it's about it's about the idea. Yeah, yeah. But Jerry's had a little experience. Jerry had a on a sports network. Jerry had his own show on a sports network. So Jerry comes to us with a little experience. And, and I, I just just finished, you know, about a, about a week ago and hitting some people up. But uh, you know, sometimes you have to have a hard stomach when you when you're back. You know? mm. One, uh, Christy, I was just thinking about something with the book. You have, and I, Leo brought this out a little bit too, and, and Jim did too. You have an advantage because you, you could be a screenwriter. Is, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That leads to to other visual, yeah. the visual aspect of yeah. it. And, uh, right. Um, you know, you just have to go out there and just do it. Yeah. You have that background, and, and you've got that, and mm -hmm. um, the acting background, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's important. Jim, so many things going on in the city this week, especially with the SAG, you know, with the SAG meeting at the end of the month. That's right. Um, and there's a few projects coming here, too. Mark Wahlberg's coming back next month. Uh -huh. TV movie or TV? A movie. What's the name of it? Uh, uh, geez, I forget the name of it. Mm -hmm. But he's supposed to be here in February. And then I think someone even said that, um, oh, I forget her name. But somebody's coming. Kill Bill. She was yeah. in Uma oh, Thurman. 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 Thurman's coming in by the spring, May. Yeah, so there's things, the there's, things, there's, there's, there's things lined up. There's things coming. Yeah. It's just not coming as fast and as many as I we like to do. It three years ago, we had five movies, six movies, seven movies, eight movies, nine movies during the summer. Eleven. Yeah. Eleven, yeah. Eleven. eleven movies going. Night and day was one of them last year. And yeah. then the surrogates. Yeah. Uh, that was the same, around the same. Shutter Island. Right? Shutter Island. Those were the films back to back. They were hiring everybody. You were working both sets. Yeah. Every week you were working. Grown ups, too. Grown ups, grown ups the same time. I think What's your number? What's, What's your, your number? number? Just should be coming out pretty soon. That's coming out in April. That's with Anna Ferris. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jimmy worked on that, didn't you? Yes, I worked I on that one day. But it was a good, well. it was a good day. It was a good day. And if, if there's no severe editing done, it'll be good. Yeah. It'll be good. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's coming out. A lot of these people now, since we stopped filming Body of Proof yeah. in the middle of December, a lot of these people go back and forth to New York. So a lot of things happening in New York? Well, they have more t TV pilots. Yeah. And, and that's what everybody uh, wants to do. Because I went to the, uh, the Mass uh, Coalition production with, with Leo here. Yeah. And the one thing they said, it was uh, Angela Perry and the uh, lady from the fighter, they need a TV pilot here in Boston. Yeah. But and all those movies to come in and all these other people to be seen, you have to have a TV pilot. Well, there was one here a couple of years ago. See, Kate Run. You and I worked on that. Yeah, but no, no. They didn't, you need a pilot. Yeah. Something's going to be here every one, yeah. two, three years. Consistent. She said yeah. that because somebody asked a good the question. It was, yeah. it was a great like question. Expensive for hire, maybe fifteen that's years right. ago. That's right. You know, you need yeah. something like that. Something that's going to start here and grow. Yeah. In every. In, that, that that's what they has said. To be a, a lot of part of the production company that wants to stay here. Yeah. Well, if you get a good, you know, production company, yeah, give that local act is a good that's uh, right. chance. But yeah. that's one thing she said. For Boston, to, you, then you'll know you made it, like New York, in Hollywood, is you need a TV pilot here. And now the key to that is tax, tax incentives, that's and right. tax credits. That's right. 
That's, that's the why key. They, there's a film in Body of Proof. Body of Proof is actually about a Philadelphia. We all, we all play Philadelphia now people. Now we're in the oh. more of Body of Proof, will they go back to Rhode Island? Yes. Hmm. But they said if it's so successful, because someone on the set said, we might have to take it to L.A. That's what, who said that? Someone on the set said, I forget. Why take it, was, it to L.A.? Well, that's where it, it's, it's tough because L.A. has got everything, the weather. Right. And the weather here, we can only shoot between the months of... Uh, May, Warm weather, yes. Yeah, when it's in May till right. September. But in LA, you can shoot from November. You can shoot year December. round. Right. Unless, unless there's a, a look where the, the gritty look and the, the winter look is an appeal, mm -hmm. like in Love Story, the Eric Siegel film Love Story, uh, mm -hmm. Ryan O'Neill, Alan McGraw, 1970, right. mm -hmm. 1971, that whole look at Harvard Square with the snow and everything. You can't get yeah, that in L.A. Well, you, you could get it in L.A., but it's more authentic. And you'd real. have to be yeah. at the studio. Right. right. If they had a studio here, this could all be done here. here. Yeah, yeah, pilots would be here, more movies would be here. And that brings up the next point. What's going on with the infrastructure and the studio in Plymouth? And that's the gone. They will never yeah, be. The is, that, is that dead? On, uh, dead. Uh, that, that's gone now, right? I've seen it about a month ago. Someone said in the paper, don't count it out. It could be a smaller version. Somebody was going to probably get a... No. How about yeah. the one in Weyman? Yeah, that's... No, they're Wayman. building houses there now. Like so this movie there. studio is out. With one, what about the one in South Boston? Is that? That, that? That's the only one they have, but that's so small, you could not... That's not big there. enough no. for... No. There was actually a studio up in New Hampshire, too, in Maine. So I didn't know that. It, some, it was in the, on the internet the yesterday, reason. somewhere in Connecticut, they're starting to build one in Connecticut. Yep. Uh, so there's all sorts of... Well, that's because Connecticut is probably very generous as far as their tax credits. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's closer to New York. Mm -hmm. Closer know. than closer than Boston. Right. Right. So that's how, that helps them. But you you got to have it. Right. Do you work in New York too? I've only worked comedy clubs in New York. I, mm -hmm. Jimmy is threatening to drag me down that's to right. Boardwalk Empire. Right. Right. Want to go to New York next week, hopefully. Uh, and you're gonna are you gonna do a gig there? You think? We're gonna Try to work yeah. there, and I just love that show. Have you ever opened for anybody? Comedians? Yeah. Well, I've opened for Tony V. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, some of his private corporate work, mm -hmm. and it was it was a thrill. It was just great to travel with him. And you write your own material? I do. Yeah. Do you steal material? Uh, <laughs> do I st do you write your own I have material? I have never stolen anything knowingly because it's it's such a taboo. I remember the great uh, Kevin Knox had a couple of his jokes ripped off by a young man, I won't mention his name, he took enough of a beating. Right. And he went up to Montreal and he told Kevin's jokes and, and someone called Kevin yeah. and said, uh, you know, he's, he is using your jokes verbatim. Well, he got back to the Comedy Connection and Kevin called him and said, listen, come on Monday night, we'll have an open, you know, we have a, an open mic Monday and I need your help. And he let him know what, it, uh, mm. what happens when you steal jokes and you know <laughs> about it. When you, write, when you write your own material, do you actually write it, or you just go in front of a mirror and just talk it? Oh, you have to write it. You actually write it down. Yeah. And see how it reads and how you it You memorize goes. it. Yeah. Interesting. You know Larry Miles? <laughs> yes. Right. Funny guy. Yes, yeah, I opened for Larry and worked with Larry, and we did the uh, Larry, Larry, and Larry. Larry. I went by Larry that. Larry yeah. Lee Lewis, Larry Miles, and... Larry's. That's like Larry, Larry, Larry from the New Hampshire. You know, I know I met Larry. Talking about people doing all sorts of things, I, I, I'm, I'm dating myself now. I met Larry. Larry sat next to me for three weeks. He sat next to me for three weeks, Jim, on the Celtic Pride set. Mm. And if you watch Celtic Pride, you will see Dan Aykroyd and Dan Stern. And if you look directly behind Aykroyd and Stern, you will see yours truly, and you will see Larry Miles next to me. Uh -huh. And that was a three-week filming. 15 years ago, and Larry was always, you know, he writes his own material, and then I saw him at Nick's, uh, not recently, but a while ago, and he's very funny. Larry, Larry's a very funny, funny. comic. That, that's something, though. How do you write a joke? Is there books? How do you write it? Is there a book? How to write a joke? Well, you know, Jerry, I don't know how you write it. You just do, because, like I said, I open with book. that joke that's on your film. And it usually does okay. I've tried Chapter to do one. it in other cities where I say, look, this is so expensive to live in Boston. I saw I got, most recently I changed it to, uh, things are really depressing, people are losing their homes. I walked through Boston Common, I saw a gentleman holding a sign, sitting on it with his pants to his ankles and said, if you were me, you'd be home now. 
That was the that joke. So yeah, you rewrite them and you try to work them. If I was in Manchester, I'd, I'd learn the name of the park out in the center of town and try to use that again. So yeah, you, you got to write them down. You, you adapt it. Right, you pretty much <laughs> adapt it. Right. You wing it more than anything. You, you, you wing it. the paper. Yeah. Write a joke. It must be funny. You know, Jerry, um, <laughs> I, I don't know where the time goes. I don't know where it goes. And we've, we've covered a lot tonight. Yeah, it's it's been a very eclectic stuff. program. It's been an eclectic. We've had all sorts of things. We've had all sorts of things discussed tonight. We were in the first a part of 2011, and this is the very first show, um, and we'll welcome you watching the program tonight. We hope you've had as much fun and you've, you've enjoyed watching the show as much as we've done, have, have been doing it for you. Um, thank you so much for watching us. I want to thank all of the people here at BNN. <clears throat> Believe me when I say this, folks, I can't do it without them. They do, they do a great job with the limited staff they had today because of the snowstorm in putting this show on so that we could bring it into your living rooms so you could, uh, you could have a good show to watch tonight. And before we go, we have a few more minutes. Uh, we will be back next month and the month after that and the month after that. We are going to be coming on for the next six months. And uh, Jerry uh, has, is involved with all sorts of things coming up. You have the St. Patrick's Day Parade mm -hmm. coming up and all sorts of things with the Kenny School and all sorts of things. And Jim, you've have, you have all sorts of things coming up too and this big, big meeting with the uh, SAG people yeah. about tax, tax breaks. Monday, very, yeah. very important. That's correct. You know, and a lot of people need to be rooting for us on that. Krista, you have something come, you have the book out already and you're working on all, you're working in films and you're working on all sorts of things in the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Leo, you're doing things too. I'm going to be shadowing Jim because he's an exciting man to follow around. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be visiting Lowell where I grew up <coughs> mm -hmm. as often as I can because I'm inspired by the fighter and didn't realize that my life was that funny. I have to tell you about, and, and this is, this is uh, on a serious, I mean, you know, we've been talking about serious things tonight and we've been talking about the, the in industry. The very, one of the very first persons that I interviewed when, uh, on radio many, many years ago when I was young and handsome and I was doing radio, although it didn't matter when I was on radio, I guess, but uh, it was Paul Songus, oh. Congressman Paul Songus from Lowell. His wife, Nikki, is now a congressperson from, from right. Lowell. That, that arena. Songus Arena. Was, was named after him. Yeah, that's where they did the fighter. And that's right. And uh, he was the first, one of the first interviews I did for WRKO Radio oh. in the 70s. And that was, uh, he, he was a nice man. Very nice he man. And, and I'm sure, and it seems to be very, very, um, very loved by people in Lowell. Oh. Sure. So that's, it's, it's interesting. So, we're glad to have you, Leo. Good luck with uh, your, your comedy <laughs> routines. Yeah. All right. It was good. I'm sure the people at home loved it. Christy, thank you so much for joining us thank tonight you. and talking about you know, a, a very important book, if I, if I may see it. Um, folks, it's uh, called Dear Tommy, and it can be, can it be uh, Amazon.com? Amazon.com. Amazon and it's, uh, it's a good read. It's Sunny Productions and tra uh, Traffic Publishing, uh, Amazon.com. And uh, Jim? John. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Pat. And Jerry. Join us next time. See you soon.